first of all, I think everyone is a spiritual messenger. To me, a messenger is one who is consciously aware of how the divine expresses through them in their interactions with others in the natural world. An embodied messenger is one whose divine expression takes place merely by their presence, without words, without anything. And an embodied messenger who then sings and does art, the transmission is contained in and under the words and in the presence and so on. And that is a live conduit through which consciousness, divine presence flows. Your art, your music is connected to your consciousness in real time. Somebody listening to art you created five or 10 years ago <laughs> is connected to your consciousness today. Somebody who sees something, a painting you did or an article you wrote or a book you created or a video. I had a video that was on my homepage for years and years. And a friend of mine wrote me one day and he said, I love the new video. This is amazing. Yeah. And I wrote about the same <laughs> video that's been there for five years. Yeah. I just went through a profound transformation and my consciousness is connected to that as an embodied messenger, yeah. AKA divine presence is flowing through all those conduits in real time. It's got your seal on it. You know, it's got your, it's got your stamp on it. It's got your name, it's your, it's your signet or signature is on it. Like, yeah, I got, I've been here, you know, yes. Ken was here. <laughs> <laughs> all this and more coming up on this episode of the Truth Seeker Podcast. Really quick, before we get started, if you are blessed by this ministry, if you're blessed by this platform, anything that I bring to the table, I ask you to partner with me via Patreon. Go to patreon.com backslash truthseeker and you unlock rewards. My entire discography of music, webinars, meditations, weekly hangouts, and so much more. Patreon.com backslash truthseeker. Go check it out. Won't you come? Truthseeker.com. She's not a Christian. Give it up, y'all. Your portal to the paranormal, esoteric, and all things spiritual. She's tampering in and down, sad and stuff. And now, your host, Truth Seeker. Welcome to the Truth Seeker Podcast. I'm your host, Truth Seeker. Today, my guest is Ken Stone. Ken, welcome to the podcast, brother. How are you? It's wonderful to be with you. Thanks for having me. Oh, excited to explore uh, spirituality, spiritual healing, and the different modalities that uh, you have learned. I feel like God is, has taught you, and we'll explore that and talk about, about all of the beautiful things that, um, that you create as a, as a vessel, as an instrument. Um, that, that word is key, the, the instrument word. We kind of kind of mentioned it before we uh, started recording, but... Uh, for a person to step aside and let their body, let their vessel be used um, by the spirit, by the divine, by the creator, uh, such an honor, uh, such a mystical experience in itself with so many different ways that a person can do that by singing, by dancing, by speaking, by writing, so many facets um, and the beautiful thing is that it usually brings forth some type of healing, some type of peace, reassurance, goodness, gladness, these amazing encouragement, and you've opened yourself up for that. And uh, I, wanna, I just want to explore it with you, man, and just journey. So um, we, I know you can totally respond to that. That's just how it is. But for people who don't know who you are, what you do, what you bring to the table. Just kind of give a brief introduction. We'll we'll start there and then we'll talk about be, being or becoming an instrument. 
Sure. Well, um, the way I show up in the world now is pretty different than the way I used to show up in the world. And I guess part of that is that that journey that I've been on or, yeah, it's certainly ongoing. But in terms of how I show up today, I consider myself a spiritual messenger. Um, and uh, some people think of me as a healer or a spiritual teacher. And I feel like I just follow as God leads. And uh, it, that's a very different way of living than the way I used to live. I used to think I was in charge. And uh, and then I I went through this awakening and, and uh, the lesson right in front of me over and over again was surrender, let go of control and allow allow God, allow the divine to express through and not just in session, not just when teaching, but in every aspect mm -hmm. of life. And, uh, and that's, yeah, I'd say that's, that's the brief introduction to, to me and to how I show up in the world right now. And you're, you're leading retreats and you're writing books and doing sessions and webinars and all of this uh, amazing stuff to help people, right? Yeah, for me, it's really, it kind of comes down to two core themes. One is let's have an experience of the divine by whatever name within our being. And I'm very blessed to be able to work with people of all traditions mm -hmm. and perspectives, um, I think, from just about everywhere in the world. It's It's been kind of an incredible process. And then the second kind of key area is supporting spiritual messengers and uncovering the way that God expresses through them and exploring that so that they can uh, honor that in, in their call and the way that they show up in the world and, and how they move forward with their life. Um, talking about receiving that call, that calling and, mm -hmm. and how you show up and I, I just listening to some of your other interviews, kind of preparing, um, for this talk, uh, it reminded me so much of, of my calling of like, mm -hmm. you're kind of doing one thing, you know, you're on a spiritual journey, but then it's like this divine message. You hear a voice or whatever. It, it gets your attention. It says, Hey, <laughs> I'm calling you as a healer. You're going to be a healer. I, I know how, what that feels like. I know, <laughs> what do you mean? I'm a healer, you know, kind of, and then spirits like, let me show you how you already are. You're not becoming <laughs> you are. Right. And so, right there's resonance there with, with, with other healers, right? And maybe yeah. people who haven't even heard the call yet, but they are healers. Share right. your story of going from one plane of existence to being called as a healer in, in that process. Well, I, it's funny. I was thinking about it just in our, as we were getting ready to start today, you know, my, the one plane of existence was, professionally a mortgage lender and probably about six months before I got smacked in the face with the call, <laughs> I started asking spontaneously, what is my purpose? And I had this sense of some deeper pull, but I couldn't articulate. I didn't understand what it was, but that question was foremost in my mind. And then I went to a meditation retreat and in resonance retreat. And on the last day, and it was, that was not my style. I mean, I was scared to go. And for whatever reason, at that point in my life, I really started facing my fears. And actually when I felt scared of doing something, I did it. I stepped into the fear and engaged in it rather than trying to avoid mm, it or, that's good. or ignore it. And so I went to this retreat and on the last day, there was a, a fellow participant who I had really felt a strong connection with, but, and I had explored it with him verbally on day one. How do I know you? You know, who are you? What, how do we know each other? And he just kind of, and I'm a, I'm a big guy. It's, it may not be obvious on camera here, but I'm six foot five and I look like a retired football player. And I, uh, I never played football, but I look like it. And so I was kind of towering over this guy and, you know, and he's kind of looking up at me and going, I don't know how we know each other. And these words came out of my mouth that I'd never even thought before. I, I said, we must just be familiar souls. And I thought, where did that come from? Hmm. And then on the last day, you know, five days later, here we are randomly paired to do a meditation in the closing. And during that, um, he writes on a piece of paper, you should be working as a healer. 
And I didn't even know what the word healer meant. And I started sobbing uncontrollably when I read that. It was like this, I don't know, like a full body sort of soul sob or something. I don't, I mean, I can only say that in retrospect. At the time, I had no idea what was happening to me. And when we came out of silence, he said, you know, you've done this in many prior lifetimes and you'll find that this is more natural than breathing for you. And again, rationally, that didn't make any sense. Lifetimes, more natural than breathing. What could be more natural than breathing? And then I hired him for kind of an intuitive session at the end of the year and came away with three really clear kind of directives. Um, you know what you're doing, go do it. You don't need to be trained. And, um, and then on the first of the year, first of 2008, January 1st, I was with somebody who had a migraine headache. And, you know, in the back of my mind, you know what you're doing. You don't need to be trained. Just do it. And I said, can I put my hands on your head? And I put my hands on their head and my hands and feet started buzzing and their, their headache went away. And, you know, again, I, I'm crying as this is happening because it was just so profound. I mean, I'd really kind of had this question maybe for probably decades to that point in my life. I had established, okay, there is a God, but I want to have an experience of God in my body. And the first time I had that experience was when I put my hands on this person's head and, and, and they were healed, but I, I didn't, I didn't think I was doing the healing. I felt like God was moving through me somehow, yeah. or I was, you know, I don't, I don't even know, even now it's sort of hard to articulate, but mm -hmm. I think that, that's, that was the, that was the beginning of, you know, the call. Yeah, that's that's so awesome. And uh I'm sure when when you were there, I mean you go into this retreat and and you're asking the bigger questions, right? You're like what am what am I supposed to be doing? Was there like was there like a fascination or were you enamored at what the facilitators were doing? Like, man, that's got to be cool to be able to show no. up and heal. No, there was no. none of that at all. It was none like totally that. random. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the the retreat was a meditation retreat. The Art of Living Foundation was putting it on. It was a part two course. So I was familiar with the the sort of the guru's right-hand guy who was facilitating. And I knew a few people there, but most of the people had come in from around the world. And this was going on in Sedona, Arizona. I didn't know anything about Sedona. I didn't know anything about mm, what the facilitators Texas. were doing. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know any of I didn't know any of that. And I I just thought I needed to be there, but I didn't know why. And during the retreat, I, you know, everyone's having their sort of your, their clearing moment, you know, the, the visceral release, people are crying and sobbing. I went through that. I mean, I, all of that was done at the end. I didn't perceive a healing experience, although it was profoundly healing. I just thought, well, whatever this meditation thing is. I mean, it was brand new to meditation. I was just a complete neophyte on so many levels. And yeah, and then this guy says he should be working as a healer. And I had no fascination with healing or energy mm, okay. work or anything. I would say I had a deep interest in spirituality for yeah. sure. But, um, but in terms of healing, if you had said, Hey, do you want to be a healer? I'd be like, no. And what is that? And no, I don't want anything to do with that. So yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't consciously in my awareness at all. What roadblocks came up for you as soon as you said, <laughs> you said, okay, I'm a explore being a healer. Like for me, like it was the first things that came to me is all the, the things that disqualify me, or at least the things right. I thought, I thought right. disqualifies me. You keep mentioning your size. Like, was that something like, I'm too big. I don't look like a little, like what, what yeah. were some of the things like, it's silly yeah. things like that, but it's a big deal yeah. to us. Right. Sure. Well, I mean, one of the things is here, I am a big white guy. I don't even look <laughs> the part, you know what I mean? It's just like, it's like, I, I just, I mean, it's so interesting that you asked that because for me, that was a huge part of what was going on. I mean, I thought this can't be real. Yeah. I must be a fraud. If it's real, I'm going to be rejected. People are going to lock me up in the psych mm -hmm. ward. I, I thought I, I'm not fit to be part of society. I mean, there was just all this inner judgment. All my noise was yeah. being projected out in this dynamic. And... I mean, the fascinating thing about it is, as I'm guessing 
you know, everyone who sort of steps into their call eventually realizes is that it's only when we follow the call that we can really iron these things out, that we really only can come to a profound experience of God's love and the unconditional nature of that love and how profound that experience is. But the first step into the pool, the toe in the pool, the diving into the deep end, you know, however each of us engages in that, that's not what it feels like. At least that's not my experience. My experience was what the heck's happening. But at the same time, it was like a gravitational pull of a planet that I couldn't escape. And then when I tried to escape it, I realized I don't want to escape this pull. Mm. This is this is so meaningful. This is so extraordinary. This is so beautiful. I don't want anything but this. And I don't even know what it is. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, working through those things, right? So getting clear, right? That's something you have to do. Like, And you said yeah. it's a process. It kind of unfolds itself and like literally like it feels like God's holding your hand and 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 walking you through it and and he's teaching you like you like you said yeah. I don't you don't have to be certified you don't have to be trained like that yeah. comes on the back of I'm going to train you from the creator right. and I've been right. training you kind of thing right. but um what what were some of those just just the process of like working through the things that tell you you're not worthy to do it or you're not even healed yourself yet or you're trying to heal people and you got this going on. Like it's so much that we deal with of saying yes and then continuing to say yes because you say yes and then like, oh yeah, I've got a broke wrist and I'm, I'm trying to heal people, but my body isn't healed or, or whatever. Like what, what were some of the things that, that came up? Um, did you have to have them before you moved, moved forward? Or was it just like this, as I'm moving, this stuff is falling off of me kind of thing? Yeah, it was like that. It was it was a process of realizing I am walking with, I am in the same experience as everyone that I am sitting with. Mm, that's good. And coming to that on a on a really deep and profound level, yeah. and setting aside. I mean, I sort of think of the integration process. I mean. Some of it is certainly, you know, the mind, body, soul, or mind, body, spirit mm -hmm. aspect. But I also think a huge part of it, and eventually the biggest part of the integration journey from my perspective is what I think of as the separate self and the whole self. The whole self's already integrated. The separate self thinks, you know, the illusion of separation is where it's at. It's it's caught in separation. And I really think of that as the whole self. It's just wrapped in sort of the wrapping paper of separation. And further, I kind of think of that as God's greatest gift to us, because this is sort of how we remember and experience who we are. In any case, going through this dynamic for me has been, you know, an opportunity to really confront the way that my separate self wants to project perfection, you know, to pretend that I've got all my stuff together. And so, you know, for me, a huge part of this journey has been about just coming to a place of total vulnerability and authenticity in the way that I communicate yeah. with my community and the world at large. And, you know, I mean, I can remember, you know, doing interviews, you know, 10, 12 years ago, and people would be saying things like, isn't it amazing how perfect your life is? And I'd say, look, my life isn't perfect. I, I mean, this, the, there's a fundamental, it seems like a fundamental incongruence between this extraordinary gift God expresses through mm. me and who I am as a human being and where mm. I am developmentally. Yeah. And I really see that disconnect, that apparent disconnect really as an aspect of divine love. It's yeah. meets you exactly where you are and supports you in the things that are there to be integrated. So like one of the things that the guy said to me back when I said to him, how am I going to be healed? You know, to your point. And he's like, you know, as you heal others, you will be healed. And it makes sense to me now, because as you know, as we step into deeper intimacy with divinity and allow the divine to express through each of us, we come to deeper intimacy with the divine. And in that process, healing, which I sort of see as a byproduct, is the natural process of that intimate walk with God. Man, so true. And it's a place, I call it this weird dichotomy of like who you are 
there's a lot of there's a lot of theology behind it. Who you are as this divine spiritual being, badass. Let's just say that, right? It is right. what it is. <laughs> right. um, you and many people, if they even if they don't know it yet, you it's you right. got one in you, or right. you can partner with it. But it's it's right. mingled, it's twisted, in, intertwined with the broken you, the you that don't like right. yourself, and I wish right. I was shorter. Like it's mingled together, but right. un, unraveling that and separating it and getting clear like it, it it's part of the journey but for some reason it's like um the grace and the the peace of like i don't deserve it because i'm not healed yet when i heal myself then i'll deserve it when i make this amount of money then i'll do, when i can love somebody or then somebody can love me whatever it is, there's so many things that disqualify you, but it's like when you transcend that, like those things have to be there for you to transcend and say yes and to do it anyway, do it anyway. And I I had an encounter um, in um, November uh, last year that was just monumental. It was a new level and, and I didn't feel worthy. You know, it was like, I was just like my, I was crying and sobbing, but my prayer and question was why like right. why are you doing this like talking to god right. i was just right. this energy in my room and weeping and showing me things in the bible and connecting it throughout the years and um it was like I said, i'm not i'm not worthy like i can't i'm not worthy he's like that's why i'm using you that's mm-hmm. why because that sweet spot right there because you know you didn't earn it and that's why i say this dichotomy of you being the spiritual giant the guru and being broken at the same time and still showing up that you're not taking credit. Like I'm the one who does it. No, I'm an instrument and I step aside and it's a process. And sometimes it's hard, but the moment you do that, man, that's why we're having this conversation. So beautiful. It's incredible to hear you reflect on this. I think what you're saying is so on target. I mean, often it's, it's easy for the separate self to want to commandeer, you know, this is happening because of me. I'm creating this. I'm in charge. I'm perfect. I have my act together, so on and so forth. And when I've expressed those kinds of things, I instantly feel totally out of alignment, the sense of resonance, the connection, all these things just start to diminish. It's not real. And when I'm able to own that and call myself out and step back into a place of humility and, you know, come back into my own embodiment, that deeper experience of the divine within, I mean, something extraordinary opens up. And all I can say is that I see that opening again and again when I have an opportunity to sit with others, you know, whether in groups or individually and so on. And I mean, it moves me to tears regularly. It's profound to watch people come to that encounter. Yeah. And then all the ways, it's like a flower that just keeps blossoming more and more and more. I mean, somebody who encounters the divine for the first time, I move to tears. Somebody who realizes Mm. I'm being called, I move to tears. Somebody who realizes here is this way in which the divine is expressing through me I mean, I think of them as my spiritual gifts, but they're not mine. I didn't create them. They're, they are all about divine expression. That moves me to tears. It's yeah. incredible, this this work, you know, this opportunity. It's it's profound. I mean, it's does, just, does it, I still it, don't know what I did to deserve this, but hey, I'm here and I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity, you know? Is, is it becoming more intense by any means? Just because like <laughs> the pressure and the stuff that people are going through is becoming more intense. So therefore mm. biblical language the weight of glory is more intense like oh okay they're gonna do you, you know suffering's gonna increase glory and healing has to increase as well like and then mm. so now there's just whew, greater levels that it's literally flowing through you as a conduit it has to energy has to have some something to travel through and as you open up yourself you're getting healed too like those tears of, of weeping sure just like what you said, like healing others is healing yourself. Like as we're talking, I can feel this. And that's the beautiful thing. Like it's very hard for me not to, to be able to talk about this and not start weeping. Like yeah. that's where we are now. And I want to yeah. weep even just talking about this stuff, yeah. but yeah. you can feel it. And like, you're getting healed too, as yeah. you're 
praying. It, yeah, it is. It is. It's. It's a. Uh, it's a high privilege for sure. It is an extraordinary privilege. It's an extraordinary privilege to, and then to sit in such a sacred space with others. And yeah, I mean, you know, you're asking about the experience of suffering. I I think the the thing that I recognize is that in suffering is a pathway to deeper intimacy with God. And so when I start to suffer, I think that's because I think I'm in charge <laughs> and, and the suffering is there to remind yeah. me I'm not in charge. And here is yet another thing to surrender. And I, if only surrender were a light switch on the wall and I could just reach out and flip it and then it's done, you know, then, then I've got that taken care of. We yeah, I surrendered 10 else. years ago. I'm fine. You yeah, know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can remember the first day I surrendered for sure. I will remember that day for the rest of my life. June 30th, 2011, I surrendered to God. I handed my life over to God. And every moment and every second since then, again and again and again, and for sure, when I let go of more and more control, I feel deeper resonance, a deeper presence, deeper peace. And when I'm working with spiritual messengers like I do in my private practice, I mean, the message that I'm sharing or that God is expressing through me and the manner in which God expresses through me without words is very much about, you know, letting go of control, which is... I mean, really kind of the opposite of, let's say, the dominant idea for a lot of spiritual messengers. You know, it's let's hold an intention, let's create the, the, the life of our dreams and so on. I think that's an important developmental phase in consciousness. But I really think one of the reasons that from my current vantage point, God put me here with, with these gifts is that you know, there's something beyond that. There's a much more expansive experience of flow that isn't about what I think. It's about God's will. It's about God's expression. It's about being in alignment with that. It's really about who I was created to be, who you were created to be, who each of us were created to be as conduits as instruments through which divine expression can flow in an undistorted way. And I mean, that is, yeah, moves me to tears all the time and, and beautifully. So they are not tears of sadness. They're yeah. tears of awe and wonder. Oh yeah. <laughs> and just, I mean, it's just breathtaking. It's just so moving. So weird because like, you know, you have those first encounters and they're so powerful and then it's not, it feels like when you stop seeking an encounter, one, a greater one's given to you. And now you find every moment you teach breath work. And so, you know, the beauty of a breath and say, thank you. The, 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 this attitude of gratitude that continues to facilitate healing, awe and wonder, you know, um, it's, it's finding something immediately to be thankful for. You know, we can just look at again, like, I'm sure you have a million things in your life and you've trained yourself. You can go back to when you dedicated your life to God and just remember that. And then your that energy is, is flowing and continuing. Okay, you surrendered, but now, now you gotta pick up. Now you gotta do this, you gotta do that. It's it's the journey and, and the process that that is amazing. Um, People, I want to ask you this, so people who feel like they're empathic, right? This whole idea of everyone's like, I'm an empath and I can't go to Walmart or I can't go out in public, right. but I feel right. deeply and like, that's cool. Right. Like you're able to feel it, but what is that? Do you think that being an empath and, and knowing that I can hear your thoughts, I can feel your excess baggage, like, is that a calling to like, hey, you got to, now that you're sensitive, this is an initiation if you'll unfold it, unwrap the gift and say, what, why do I feel heaviness when I walk by these people and ponder and, 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 and ask what, what the next step is, or is that just by like human nature and everybody can tap into that. Then they don't have to specifically be a healer or something like that. 
You know, it's interesting. My take on um on being I probably everyone's an empath at some level. Yeah. And I I perceive that I mean this is maybe both the blessing and the challenge of of being untrained is that I have a very particular perceptual view that's a function of the experiences that are unfolding and the conversation I have with God and so on and so forth. And sometimes it matches up with a popular narrative and sometimes it has absolutely nothing to do with it. And in the case of the empath dynamic, I'm, I'm actually not that aware of what the common perceptions are on it. But to me, there are sort of different phases that we can go through as, as being empaths and somebody who is struggling with, first of all, if we look at the origin of an empath, the origin of an empath, it seems to me in childhood, that empathic dynamic is utilized to create safety, right? Yeah. It's, it's a way of saying, how can I be safe in this space? Maybe it's with family, maybe it's out in the community, maybe it's at school, wherever it is. And it's almost like, I mean, the way I see it at least is it's like sending, if each of us have this fountain of divine presence that's shooting up in the air and coming down on us, empaths take that and put a metal plate on the top of their head and spray that out in the world and use it like radar. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? How can I fit in here and have things be safe? And so for me, the language I use on that is there's an unintegrated empath, right? Somebody who is being bombarded by all these dynamics. Mm -hmm. And it's a functional dynamic until it's dysfunctional, just like everything else, right? It works until it doesn't. And when it doesn't work, if people come to me and say, well, how do I become an integrated empath? My invitation to them is to consider a, let's remove that steel plate and realize that divine presence is everyone has it. So you don't need to get into a codependent dynamic with other people or fix them or anything. There's nothing to fix. Everyone's whole already. And your opportunity is to experience that for yourself, just to sink into the experience, come to deeper intimacy with divinity for yourself and realize your own wholeness and realize that fountain is for you. You don't have to utilize that for others or to be safe. Mm. The purpose of that is to experience God's love and your own wholeness and remember who you are and open up to that more fully. And in that process, the, it's like the orientation of life begins to change. Instead of being an outwardly focused life, concerned about what's happening out there and within others, it's about here's what's going on within me, the opportunity to integrate this and come to a deeper experience of resonance. So now instead of fitting in with the world, I can be in the world. And now this is not the right language because it's not an intention-based thing. And this isn't about sharing something with anyone else, but I am being in my divine presence. If you looked at it visually, it would be a pillar of light. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And I am not, the light is divinity as me. That's how I perceive mm -hmm. it. And, and the divinity is shining in and through every aspect of me. And now as I move through the world, that is how I'm showing up. Rather than being concerned with the drama and trauma of other people, I am in the experience of my own wholeness. And now there's a totally different relationship available with others, right? So maybe being an empath opens a pathway for being a healer, but being a healer, at least from my perspective, isn't really about healing people. It's not about understanding what's wrong. There is nothing wrong. It's about seeing people as they really are. Mm. I mean, when I sit with somebody, they've got a broken arm. I don't, I literally don't see their broken arm. And it's not because I'm projecting or imagining what it's like that for them not to have a broken arm. I just don't see it. All I see is a whole person on every single yeah. level. And as we sit together, they begin to have an experience of that wholeness. But it's not because I'm casting something to them or doing something to them. It's all God. God's already within them. God is enlivened within them. And that leads to that healing dynamic. So back to the question about empaths, seems to me that's just another door we can step through and open to deeper intimacy with divinity and our deeper purpose. Mm. The thing that counts you out is your ticket in, you know, to even, to even be an individual who appears on the outside to be broken you know, is the very thing that God will use to, it's a gift. You thought it was a curse and it is, if you let it be, 
But That's God true. has a way of, the scripture says that God will take the things that were meant for your harm and use them for your good. So first of all, the idea of, of you being broken or needing some help in a certain area that you wanted to rid yourself of or whatever the case is, it definitely um, opens up a door for an encounter because now I'm with, I, I you know, I, I'm a Christian as far as like, my study in the scriptures and, I, and Jesus is my, my, my guru, right? He's my everything, right? I'm a, I'm a devotee of Christ. And so his ways, you know, and people with messed up hands. And just like you said, Jesus did not see their hand. They saw it. He's like, Hey, don't worry. The hand's okay. But the very thing that people made fun of them, that they made fun of themselves, the ego and the critic and all of that, why I can't, earn a good living or why people look at me side-eyed that thing that was mocking you and against you now has you face to face with the creator yeah. with healing itself reaching yeah. out to you and you know those things we try to get rid of and uh we don't like and maybe people have used them against us like for me like when i was called as a healer when i heard it right um so everything came up with why you can't why you can't be um, I stuttered a lot. I still do. Um, my voice, I'm a rapper. I have more of a southern street slang voice, and it helps with my rap music. But guided meditations and healing, like, no way. There's no way. We're not doing right. some, like, ghetto Ebonics, got to med. Like, that's what was in my head just because of right. hearing myself and those things that I counted myself out, whatever I call the devil, whatever that is, is using it against me, ego. But now it's the very thing that God has anointed to use your voice in guided meditations, in music, in podcast, in declarations. And once you own it, the thing that's trying to count you out, God is able to renew it and let you look at it differently. The thing that counted you out is the thing that I showed you that my grace was sufficient and I would use you regardless of your withered hand. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Those yeah. things are those things are are important. They are the calling card, the initiation. Like, hey, you want more? Like, do you want to give that up? No, it's it's a withered hand, and like you know, the withered hand or or an ailment. Like, that's a symptom. Like, that's on the outside that everybody sees. You right. know, the one I always talk about the woman in the scripture caught in the act of adultery. They saw her prostituting herself out. You didn't see she was a single mother. You didn't see that everyone would talk about her and make fun of her and treat her like a leper, but no one would help her. You didn't see that the, the underlying issues from childhood. All you saw was a symptom. And the, the fact of Christ healing energy sees you not as though you look on the outside, it's, as it says that man judges the outside, but God judges the heart and he can see directly to the root cause let me come in and let me sit with you as you say let me sit with you for a minute you want to sit with me i i was caught in the very act of adultery i i was caught stealing money i was caught this i was the one who has broken speech you want to use me yeah i do because everyone who's got it all together they don't have any time for me, but you realize your brokenness and you realize your need. My goodness, that'll preach. Like it really is the thing that is your is your MO, is your calling card to to step into it. Put a, let the light hit it. Hold it up. Take a picture of it. Show it. <laughs> That's beautiful. I I think that the you know, my experience of God is that the judgments are my projection. They're what I think I know about yeah. God. But when I let go of what I think I know about God, I encounter God in ways that are an absolute mystery. But that mystery envelops me and loves me in ways that I can't conceive of. I can't, and yet I can experience them. I do experience them. And I have the same experience when I sit with people. When I sit with them, they have an idea, they have a perspective, they have experience, they have patterns, they have whatever they have. And sometimes they want to understand them. And 
maybe I have an awareness or perspective or can see something. But I always tell them at the end of the day, I mean, whatever I have to say, that's not what this is about. This is about you encountering that mystery. And as you open up to the mystery, something extraordinary begins to happen. And that aspect of you, I kind of think of it as the core wound um, from my perspective, certainly in my own life, my core wound is about feeling fundamentally unlovable. And I did not feel fundamentally lovable until I surrendered. And then I had an experience of divine love, of God's love. It was just, I mean, it left me giggling and weeping at the same time. I could, mm. I could not conceive of that beforehand. And as I was experiencing it, it was so radically different than anything I could have ever imagined. And I mean, that's my experience of the divine. It's, it doesn't, there's not a judging dynamic. There's not, it's just the divinity meets you exactly where you are, supports you in your walk, supports you in your integration, supports you in your journey back to the remembering, but most essentially from my perspective, the experience of who you are. And you could put it in all sorts of different language child of God, undistorted expression of the divine, however it is. I mean, I, I have a profoundly intimate relationship with, with Jesus and a profoundly intimate relationship with the <laughs> avatars of each tradition. And I just am, but my, and I just feel profound humility to be able to sit in that space with other human beings and watch how the divine works through them. And to witness that is just, I can't even put it into words. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is like, it's so good. And one thing that you mentioned, like, cause we're talking about healing, we're talking about like sitting and prayer and energy flowing. Right. And we're talking about like the spiritual practice, but and you, and we said, you know, maybe all empaths won't be healers to this, extent or sit with you in a healing circle or sure. go on a, a journey with you, you know, in the re retreat in the forest. Not everybody sure. is going to do that. And I think it would be sure. silly if everybody did do that. Yeah. Like there's yeah. like this energy in the conduits and the vessels are versatile, but it is still love. You mentioned poetry and music and I'm a rapper and, you know, yeah. writing and stuff. So there's different ways yeah. that people oh, yeah. express and it has the same effect. The when you hear that effect. song, oh my God, that yeah. song, mm, 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 it touches me, it heals yeah. me, and it brings yeah. me into a magical circle in the woods. Like it doesn't matter how it expresses, it's the same thing. Exactly. It is healing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. To be a spiritual man, first of all, I think everyone is a spiritual messenger. To me, a messenger is one who is consciously aware of how the divine expresses through them in their interactions with others in the natural world. An embodied messenger is one whose divine expression takes place merely by their presence, without words, without anything. And an embodied messenger who then sings and does art, the transmission is contained in and under the words and in the presence and so on. And that is a live conduit through which consciousness, divine presence flows, your art, your music, is connected to your consciousness in real time. Somebody listening to art you created five or 10 years ago <laughs> is connected to your consciousness today. Somebody who sees something, a painting you did or an article you wrote or a book you created or a video. I had a video that was on my homepage for years and years. And a friend of mine wrote me one day and he says, I love the new video. This is amazing. Yeah. And I wrote about the same <laughs> video that's been there for five years. Yeah. I just went through a profound transformation and my consciousness is connected to that as an embodied messenger, yeah. AKA divine presence is flowing through all those conduits in real time. <laughs> it's got your seal on it. You know, it's got your, it's got your stamp on it. It's got your name. It's your, it's your signet or signature is on it. Like, yeah, I got, I've been here, you know, yes. Ken was here. <laughs> 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 it is and it's timeless and that's the beautiful thing i love those i love those comments too of like you know a random comment on the video like i said two years ago five years ago oh my god your prayer at the end i'm just weeping i'm like 
you should listen to the prayers now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like they're more, you know, geared a little bit, you know, but still like it doesn't have an expiration date, you know, energy doesn't, you know? Yeah. Um, Well, you talk about working with angels or like divine beings and things like that. And, you know, learning their names, if it's, if you need to, you know, I come from a Christian background and, and it's very ABC. It's very simple. And it's, that way for a reason right but when you begin to unpack like what jesus was doing it was not it was very complicated and so he's let me let me on your behalf listen i've been standing before the angels i've i've been communing i've been fasting and now i'm coming down here to deal with you and to be be a conduit right so that you'll come up higher and and do it yourself if if you receive but learning that stuff and unpacking it like do you have to call upon certain what we'll call angels or avatars that specialize in writing that specialize in poetry do you have to learn their names or is it just when you open up and ask because that person is already connected to them and they just kind of show up that energy comes to you and through you what is like the process of Mm. learning all the names of angels it gets very complicated and then which tradition and all of that kind of stuff but for you in, in your practice, how, how does that look? Well, uh, it's interesting. I, um, so my hands and feet were buzzing and I went to a guided meditation thing, you know, learn who your guides are. And I was like, I don't know who my guides are. And, and, uh, I wasn't really hung up on it. It wasn't like something I was focused on. And so I went through this guided meditation and it kept coming to the same conclusion. And I kept thinking, ah, I don't think this is right. I need to do this again. So I'd start over again, same conclusion, same conclusion. So finally, I'm like, Jesus, is this you in my hands and feet? Like, is that is that you? I mean, seriously, is that you? Yes, it's me. I'm like, okay. So then I kept that hidden for a number of years because I was like, geez, if I talk about this, I mean, they're just going to send me off to the funny farm again. Mm -hmm. And then one day I sent an email out to my community and I was like, look, the reality is that I work with people of all traditions and faiths and and none of that is I'm happy to show up. And there's this experience that I have of Jesus in my hands and feet. And, you know, I just. I'm sharing this because I feel called to share it. And, you know, and I sort of held my breath, like, are, is everyone going to disappear? And instead what people come back and they're like, yes, you know, I come from a Buddhist tradition. I have this profound relationship with Christ and da, 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 da. Like, it's just, so I had another experience where, I mean, this stuff happens all the time to me. And I, I just kind of shake my head. Okay, God, here you go again. You know, this intuitive is flying across the country and she gets a message. You're going to meet with this guy named and she gets my name. She gets my actual name intuitively and blah, blah, blah. He's going to do this healing with you. And so she meets me and she's like, I think we're supposed to do a healing. And I was like, "Okay, great. Let's do a healing. So in the middle of the healing session, she's like, "Uh, can you comment on everyone who's in the room here? And I was like, yeah, she's like, will you? And I said, no, I want to talk about them. (laughs) And she's like, uh. I think you need to. And I was like, mm, I don't, I don't think I want to. And she said, please. Okay. It looks to me like the ascended masters are all gathered here. And she's like, yes. And do you understand what your relationship is with them? And I said, no. And I don't think we need to talk about that. Like, why are we doing this? Let's just get after it here. She's like, they're all looking at you. They're you're like, you have a very unique relationship with the, with this group of people. And I mean, it was almost more than I could deal with at the time. And the honest truth is maybe this is like the second or third time I've ever talked about it publicly right now with you. I, what I feel like when I go into session, when I sit with people, when I'm teaching is everyone is here. Everyone who needs to be here is here. And the people, the entities, the expressions, the avatars, who most resonate with the people in this circle will be communicating with them. And often I'll be thinking I'm saying one thing and people will email me and say, I couldn't believe when you said blah, blah, blah. And I think I didn't say that. Like, I don't remember saying that at all. And somebody else will email in and they'll say, Hey, at that moment in the thing, and they're talking about the same thing. And they're talking about two totally different things. The first time that happened, I thought, 
I wonder if this is what speaking in tongues is like. Mm. I mean, I don't, some people do light language and all this. Mm -hmm. I, as far as I know, I'm not doing that, but I just think spirit moves through us in exactly the way it needs to for the people that we sit with. Yeah. For example, the guy who did the session with me at the end of uh, December, 2007, do you know what he actually said in that session? He actually said, go get trained. Blah, blah. He said the opposite of what I heard. I wow. heard you don't need to be trained. Just go do it. Da, da, oh, my da. goodness. Yeah, yeah. I heard what God needed me to hear, in other words. But what he actually said, I listened to the recording five years later. I mean, I was like on the verge of homelessness and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, things are fine. And then later I listened to it. It says you need to go get trained. You need to do this. You need to do this. Yeah. We hear exactly what we need to hear. Spirit is communicating to us in that way. So for me... These resources are all already here mm -hmm. and they communicate and support in ways that I don't even have to be consciously concerned with. They are all here. And my relationship with Jesus is exactly what it needs to be. And I work with Christians and I work with Buddhists and I work yeah. with Jews and I work with Muslims and I work with and on and on and on Hindus. Yeah. And for me, it's like, we're just hanging out, having an experience of divinity from all these different perspectives. And it's exactly as it's meant to be. And I can't believe I get to have that sacred space mm. and share that with people. And then be okay. Like, again, another thing that disqualifies you. Don't tell them it was Jesus. No, right. use, you know, they call him Master Sananda. Use that word. Like yeah. these kind of things you're like. Yeah, but I don't really call him that. <laughs> like, I, I'm cool with calling him that, but that's not what, like, I don't call him that. Like, I call Jesus or Yeshua or whatever, and those are mm -hmm. my names. And why can't I share the names and make it simple, right? Um, right. And the thing that says, don't do it, don't do it, do, and, until you do it, shut up, not do it, whoever. Something's trying to hold <laughs> me back. Like, something is, it's ego is trying to save you. Like, remember when they made fun of you in fourth grade because you did right, this? Right, exactly. They're going to make fun of you at 40, you know? Yeah. Um, but when you own it and you're like, hold on, the look, look at the looks on these people's faces. And why is this person crying? You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like, right. oh, goodness. Thank you, spirit, that you, you know, held my hand through me trying to, you know, make this easily mm -hmm. digestible or, or put my light under a lid, if you will. Um, I'm finding very similar experiences in, in, in the exact opposite where I've been in a Christian, you know, upbringing and, and circle. Um, and even more so now, I don't want to forget those people or leave them behind, but there's a lot of like religious people in that cir circle too. And in my mind, in my study, it make like it, it, it's coupled with my ego, like of the religious nagging and, you know, naysayer, like I hear them when I'm studying, um, I, cause I came from that. I used to be that. So when I'm studying about the different spiritual technologies and angels in the Bible, I hear the one that says, nah, that's not what that means. And it really, it helps me now because I'll go deeper to prove it like biblically, like, okay, this isn't the only place that, 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 and that is what it's talking about here that is bidding everyone to come and taste and dive into the, the waters of divinity. Um, but it's the, the opposite is the fact that, you know, I can simplify, you know, Jesus and the angels. But then when you start really unpacking who Jesus and the angels are, and it's going to lead you to something. Historically, uh, re religious texts, ancient texts is what I love. But that's going to lead you somewhere else to the oldest ones we got. That's just who I am. I've, that's just what I am. And uh, it's like, okay, now I'm dealing with people and I, I use the name Jesus and Yeshua. But now it's like, like there's, it tells you to remember the ones who came before. And we've been told that those names were demons or something, right? And it, but they're not. Like the ones who told you that they're demons are actually calling on those names because they know those names contain power. And now we got a religious community that I'm like, do I just say God or do I say, like, what is my practice? What, where am I finding results? And wherever I am, like, there is a responsibility to say, hey, guys, we're unpacking and we're learning and unlearning and relearning together. And this is what's working. So 
when you own it, same thing. I'm scared, but then they're like, oh yeah, amazing. God's teaching me something very similar. You owning your truth is a yes that I can be different and own mine, and we still complement one another. My goodness, when you finally say yes, when you show up and keep showing up, no matter how weird it gets, and you know like I know, it gets very weird. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, uh, I can remember there was a retreat I did once and I said, welcome to all who are too weird for words. My name is Ken Stone. I'm your leader. And everyone started laughing uncontrollably. And then I said, look, our time together, I want it to be marked by two fundamental energies, the opposite probably of your conventional life. We're going to be here without excuse and we're going to be here without explanation. Just be who you are. Just And you don't have to explain yourself. Please don't. In fact, let's not get into story. Just show up yeah. and be. If we can start there, we can do profound, deep work. And much of that work will happen in silence because we can drop the, the rest of the veil of the illusion of separation and have profound, intimate experiences with divinity in the context yeah. of this circle. You will be whispered to, yelled at, loved, hugged, in whatever, cajoled by divinity, however you perceive it is perfect. I can, I'm happy to share my perspective. I'm happy to share how God whispers in my ear. But I believe my purpose is not to share what God says to me, to you, yeah. that you listen to me. It's to share that in support of you discovering how God whispers to you in whatever the way divine presence expresses. Um, yeah. So That's, it's beautiful to hear you talk about your journey and, and your process. That's wonderful. You said without excuse, without explanation. Is there another, is there an ex expectation that we should show up without expe expectancy? <laughs> for sure. For Cause, sure. Because I mean, some people do. I mean, the man with the withered hand, like I, I need yeah. my hand, like I'm coming yeah. with an expectation. Yeah. And maybe there's a time and yeah. place for that versus yeah. be like, hey, I'm just here. I'm just, yeah. there's no... Well, you know, what I, I used to, when I, when I first got started, I, um, I went to a spiritual networking group here in Northern Colorado, where I live. And I was terrified that I would encounter some, a mortgage client there because I was, you know, I was coming out of the closet as a healer or whatever. Yeah. And of course I ran into a mortgage client there. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. she was like, great. You're just as weird as I always thought you were. I wondered when you were going to wake up to who you were. Okay. Thank you. So um, and then some people there said, let's do group sessions. You work with groups of people. We see your hands around the world. And I freaked out. I was like, no, no, I'm not going to do that. And then I thought, okay, maybe I'll do that. So I started doing that and people would show up and they'd, they'd ask these questions. So I'd sit in a circle with people and then we'd just drop into silence. And after a while, people would say, do I need to hold an intention? Should I have an expectation of what's going to happen? And what became clear to me was you can do that if you want, but intention as powerful as it is is like kinking the hose of divine presence in the garden right it's like the water will flow if we release our expectation our intentions if we let go in other words more divine grace more divine presence flows into the garden but if we start holding intention it's like saying god i know best <laughs> i mean i don't know best i think i know best my separate self thinks it knows best so over time, what I've said to people, I used to be kind of rigid about this. And now I just say, look, if you're ready, if you're in a space where you can come into this circle without an expectation, then that's an invitation for you. Mm -hmm. And if you want to come with an expectation and an intention, that's fine. You'll have an experience. And if we're participating on a virtual event, uh, odds are it's been recorded. And if you have the recordings, listen to this again and what you'll discover is something totally different every time you encounter this dynamic. And the reason is it's not about time and space. Everything we're doing is outside of the illusion of separation. It is between the divine by whatever name and you. So when you sit in that space, you could hold an intention one time, you could drop it the next, see what happens, have an experience, experiment around, see what unfolds. And for me, then when that gets reflected back and people are sharing, here's what happened to me and here's my experience and so on and so forth, you know, usually my jaw is unhinging. I'm just like, mm. 
whoa, God is so amazing. Isn't this incredible? Because everyone has a different perspective. Everyone's central nervous system is different and so on and so forth. And yet here we all are sitting together with all these disparate perspectives you know, if we if we brought up politics, there might be instant disagreement. <laughs> if we talked religion, people might say, I yeah. know the truth. You don't yep. know the truth. Yep. But That's if not his name. Sit, if we're just willing to sit in divine presence, <laughs> look what happens. We could just open up to this collective experience of resonance that's not dependent on a word or a perspective. It's an experience that we share that each of us are having individually. Words get in the way many times. Many times. And it's because it, it's this, you know, every religion, everything, everything is someone having an, an, an encounter, an experience with the energy, with the information, and then trying to articulate it in their language. Um, right. and, and, and they've cultivated it differently. Like they work, they found a new way to work with it. They apply it to this, this, and this when you only apply it to that. And you're separate. You're, you're you're separated by water, a body of water, right? And so the, the <laughs> language is different. And so, when you can see that, it, you know, not everybody can. You know, you, it takes it takes time. Maybe people don't want to see it, you know, because there's something special that's mine, you know. And then you got to sure. give up that thing that you you thought was yours. Like, come on. Um, but that's a part of being able to sit with people is to let go of your narrative and and really to to dive into their narrative like just jesus figure right or whatever messiah figure is like it is energy that embodied itself to dive into your story we're watching star wars and and that energy dives into star wars and shows up through luke and obi-wan and everybody who chooses love right and then it goes to the aztec aztecs and it embodies itself there and it and it jumps into this reality through everybody who separated themselves for the higher good, for truth, for honor, and for love, right? And and how they work with it and how they use it. And to say that one is better, no, but everyone has a beautiful peace and you have to step back and lay yours down in order to honor them all. And man, that's a, that's a process. It's, it's hard, but... Um, that's what we're supposed to do and be able to honor people where they are. Even the people who don't get it, who think that you're crazy, they're listening to, like there's people listening right now and they're struggling with some of the terminology. Sure. Like they're, yeah. oh, uh, uh. but when they finally let go and say, okay, let's see what you're saying. Cause they know the presence. They right. felt, not everybody, some people is new, but, but for those who are holding on to the terminology, you know, but then they'll, they'll find the embodiment of that, same terminology with different words, but it's the same healing flow, the same resonance, you know. Remember doing like yoga and breath work and those things, but I didn't start there. I started in, in a small church with the Holy Ghost fire and the energy. Sure. And you mentioned shaking hands and shaking feet, but the same it's the same. In when I'm doing yoga, I'm connecting, I'm saying hello, but I'm, my body's involved. It ain't just my soul. Now it's my spirit. Now right. it's my flesh. So everything gets to dip into the water of healing. And the the beauty of that expression and how vast, that's such an honor to be able to see, hey, I see you. Mm -hmm. To be able to look mm -hmm. at some somebody who goes to the doctor and gets healed and, and see Jesus, I see you, man. I see you meeting those people where they are. Somebody who receives the laying on of hands and a, and a headache goes away. Hey, I see you. An Indian mixing mud and, and do, drawing a circle on your forehead and then the evil spirit, which is a, in the form of a headache, leaves. Hey, I see you. Like, this is the beauty that it doesn't really give a damn about your narrative. You can have your narrative because we've got to be able to try to speak about it. The moment we start trying to describe it, there you are pulled <laughs> down into this reality to say, yeah, it's kind of like the movie Star Wars. You've seen that, right? Yeah. But it's it's the beauty of the storytelling, of trying to articulate. I know I can't and I suck and I don't do a good job, but I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try. You know, uh, early on when I would, I didn't, you know, I had a website, but I hid my name from the website. I had a Twitter account, but I didn't want anyone to know it was me, mm. sort of where I was at developmentally, not what most people go on social media for. And so I would be uh, sharing, you know, about experiences and people would be like, 
well, it's supposed to happen this way. It's supposed yeah. to happen this way on social media. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. This is just how this is unfolding. Like this isn't, I, I'm not in charge here. This is just how it's going. And then I would end up being, you know, nothing's random, but randomly referred to people because nobody, it was like, if some, if I did a session with somebody, they'd tell a friend or whatever, but it wasn't like I was asking for referrals. And so uh, people are, are uh, calling me up. Hey, I hear I should have a session with you. What's going to happen? And my response was, I have no idea. Well, can you tell me anything about it? I don't know. I think you're going to have an experience of the divine by whatever name. Well, there's a book I'd like to read. One guy says, I, I don't know, maybe someday I can write the book, but right now I have absolutely no language for you. Right. So I do this for two and a half years. And then the summer of 2010, I start asking God, I'm like, Hey, maybe this is, maybe this is actually my calling. Maybe I'm finally getting on board. Like maybe it's time for me to leave mortgage lending and really embrace this. But I probably should have something to teach. I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to have a something to teach for money, something to teach for relationships, something to teach for deeper divine experience and so on and so forth. And in comes this download in the fall of 2010. And I say out loud, I'm with a client. This Sometimes God talks to me in session and it has nothing to do with the client. Mm. I say, that's it? Like, it's that simple? And what I get is this awareness just as I, I'm still unpacking it more than 10 years later. And the thing is, this structure just sort of reveals itself. And so I start teaching it, I'm sharing it and so on. And even as I'm sharing it, I'm telling people, listen, the purpose of this structure, it's temporary. It's like a scaffolding. And we're going to kick that scaffolding over as quickly as we can. Like, I'm going to teach it to you. It's it's important in, in a sense that it's going to open that experience for you, but that experience is already within you. So let's get rid of it as quick as we have it. It's so interesting how when the minute it gets distilled in the language, there's almost a necessary level of distortion between what's really going on, the divine mystery, yeah. and what we think is happening. And as, the sooner we can recognize that, we can refocus our energy from the understanding of things which make sense in the illusion of separation to the experience of the mystery, which is life, is divine presence, is healing, is, and we don't have to understand any of it. We can just be in that garden. We can be enveloped in that love. We can be held in the arms of the divine. Every part of our lives, the more we let go, the more we open up, the more the hose unkinks, the more everything gets watered with divine presence. It just floods into every part of our lives. And language is so inadequate for trying to explain yeah. or describe that. Yeah. yeah. I tell you, you know, when I started, you know, I, I started out as a Christian rapper. And so, mm -hmm. like, literally, like, you're kind of limited on what you can talk about. <laughs> <laughs> okay that's not christian you can't talk about that and then my yeah. uh you know and so i had like 40 songs or you know that were like using the same words right. um but when i was going through this awakening you know and seeing god and seeing jesus right and everything the holy spirit whatever like those are words you can use you can i can go to the hebrew like that's some more words now i can but as an artist you're like okay i only got can't say those words. No, that's, it's not in there. Um, but when it started to open up and I was like, oh, well, that's the same word as this. And for me, yeah. for me, those words are interchangeable. I can yeah. say this, but mean that because it's, they're, they're married. Right. Yeah. Um, and it just, the, the spiritual awakening opened up the vocabulary of like, I don't just have to say an angel approached me in a dream. I can, first of all, describe the angel and I can use words, hopefully, that you've never heard that are going to be like, hey, what does, what does that mean? What does uh, an etheric angel that is invoked by Solomon's seal that is from God's wheel in the nighttime, in the night sky? What do you mean? What does that? It's like, hey, mm -hmm. look it up, you know, Google it in an encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I just simply mean, yeah, I saw an angel and this is how he got to me. But the uh, the creativity with language even man it's so so beautiful um you kind of gotta use if you're trying to talk about it but yeah some things you like man just show up and be quiet and you're going to experience it and then you go off and articulate it even with christ 
people did that. He even told him, hey, don't tell nobody what, <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, and he go and tell everybody they see. There's a dude, he's freaking shape-shifting, and angels are coming to him. You got to go see him. He's like, man, I told right. you not to. Now I can never come back to the city again. Your, your elders are going to try to kill me, and then the townspeople, are, everybody's going to want me to come to their church or their house, you know? So the language is it's fun. It's, it makes us human. You know, and, and, and how can we hold back our language if needed, right? Mm-hmm. To say, yeah, it's Jesus, man. He loves you so much. And it's not, it's, it is Jesus, but in Jesus is what the Bible calls the fullness of the Godhead. And that's mm-hmm. more than just Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as they teach. But that is all the gods of healing, of authority, of great. They're all of them that have ever existed. Like once you know that and you're okay with that, you can unpack it and then you can say hello to each one of them. Beautiful. With the language. Call upon their name, man. It's just to know their name. But you don't have to. It's simple. You can say love. I ask love to be present with the spirit of wisdom. People say that. Like wisdom. Wisdom has another name. It's Sophia. You know, or and then she has children. Oh my goodness. Don't even get me started. Like, it's fun. Like, it's a, let me know you. You only know this side of me. You know about me, Sophia, but you don't know my children. You never talked to my daughter. You never, you never had a beer with me. You know what I'm saying? You've never heard me. You've never heard my music. You don't like my music, right? But to really be like the fullness of it, my goodness, it, and each facet is beautiful. But then it's in the self, self censor though, self censor like. <laughs> Jesus loves you so much. You just need to know it because he does, you know, man. So it's good. so beautiful to be with your poetry, man. It's really beautiful. It's, I can feel it. It's fun when they all, everything comes together. Like it'd be cool to sit with you and have a beer, right? But it's, it's also fun to sit with you and pray. It's mm-hmm. also fun to sit with you. And, hey man, let's do your thing. Let's do that mm-hmm. transcendence thing that, you know, let's go into trance. Will you, Okay, let's uh, get ready because I know you only know me as a, um, you know, mortgage broker. Right. Wait to, and I am that. Trust me, I am. That's a part of me. And if you need me, I'm here. <laughs> but you're going to know me as somebody who knows some things that are very ancient. And, and I am all of those things and more. It's- it's so funny that you're saying that when I, when I, I'm no longer a mortgage lender, I haven't been for since 2010, but when I was <laughs> and I, and I would sit with a client, I'd be meeting with them about mortgage stuff. If my hands and feet would start buzzing, I took that as a sign that I was supposed to talk about healing. Mm. And in my head, I'd be like, come on, God, I don't want to do this again. This is not what they're here for. And I can remember one guy who's an engineer. He listened to me very carefully. He shared things about his family that he had never shared before. I And just, we had this profound conversation. And at the end of it, he said, you know what, Ken, if it was anyone else, I would think they were full of it, but it's you. So I believe you. This has been a really amazing conversation. Not what I expected to have here with you today, but a really amazing conversation. Mm. And that's how it's been, you know? It's like, <laughs> it's like did I overstep my boundaries? <laughs> Those questions, and maybe some cases you did, but that's how you learn, right? Let me. That's exactly right. The that's language how you learn. The language, yep. you know. Yeah. Um, but but speaking of the language, right? I love the language. Uh, I love all of it, you know. Bible language too, just because that's, I'm from that that land, right? Yeah. Um, it uses the terminology trance because I get a lot of pushback, mm. and I love challenging people. She's like, hey, this stuff is in there and you don't know it. Like, mm. it's, it's amazing. The things you're, you're, you've been, literally, your ancestors killed people for this stuff, but it's in there in a good way. We got to learn. We have to learn. Um, so things like trance, which I love it because that word is in the Bible, in the King James. I mm. fell into a trance on the Lord's day. I w- was fasting and I f- immediately fell into a trance and an angel came to me in this trance and it's in there. So... I love that word, transcendental meditation. Uh, uh, transmission is something that is a word that you like, and it's a word that 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 uh, you bring to the table. And I do like the fact that as maybe some of this stuff would seem scary to many people who are, you know, raised religious and, and, and 
for good reason, mm -hmm. but it's there. It's there. The people we were told to be like, the people that we were told to emulate, they practice transmissions because they would receive messages. They would go into portals. They would leave their body. I mean, you name it, it's in there and it's so beautiful. Um, can you talk a little bit about just going into the, the transmission and and can can we do that at, at the at just the end here? Can we just kind of yeah. go through a short transmission just to For sure. feel and, and to experience? Yeah, yeah. And that, that may actually be the most meaningful thing to do. I, I mean, what I can say is transmission is just a way of talking about being in session. And I don't think it's a transmission that's coming from me. Mm -hmm. When I use the word transmission, what I mean is it's a transmission from the divine. And I wouldn't even say that the transmission is coming through me. I would say that the transmission is direct between the divine and you. And somehow that happens when I get a chance to sit with you, because that's one of the things that God does through me. I, I don't, I don't even know how to say more about it. Yeah. And when I open transmission, I do so using the words, let's begin. And when I close, I say, let's, you know, do this and that, and I'm going to bring the transmission to a close now. But those are just ways of trying to demarcate something that is always going on. That is to say, there is always a deeper experience of divine presence that is available to us and how we choose to encounter that and the tradition, the perspective that we come from. For me, I believe that this transmission, that the way God works through me, honors that with each individual because it's not flavored through the lens of my consciousness. So people who come from a traditional uh, Christian tradition have a Christian experience. They have a deeper experience with Christ. People who come from other traditions have meaningful experiences in the context of their tradition. Um, and I would, I would love to spend some time in transmission, do some soul embodiment work, just sink in. Heck, I don't even have to say anything. We could just sit in silence together and be in that space. And uh, the only question I have for you is I need a little bit of guidance because I tend to drop separation the minute it happens. And if I don't have some awareness, time could disappear for me. It does every time. And we, we might... Uh, go through an hour and think it's about three seconds long. So give me some guidance. So I have some reference point for how yeah, long man. you'd like to sit um, together and then, and then we'll drop in for sure. Yeah. Well, we'll do, we'll, we'll do however, however long it takes. And just to give them a sample, you know what I'm saying? So, sure. um, a mini, you know, and, but, but well, I'll, I'll 30 minutes if we, if we have to, you know, um, <laughs> but 10 minutes if we have to, um, okay. just because I, prior prior things coming up on, on the hard cutoffs but sure. but I do want to give them a sample because it is as does it always have have to be because you, you mentioned like an hour like sometimes that scares people right of like oh I don't have an hour I, I only have 10 minutes to myself is there a way to like can people get in and get a I don't want to say a quickie that's but can people just like I feel like in the breath okay here's what it is kind of thing yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's open that way. There's this, uh, this breathing process that uh, God gave to me in January of 2009. And uh, let's start with that. And that can be very, very simple. And then we'll open into transmission for a few minutes and then we'll close. So if it's comfortable, oh, and I just want to say this, cause I'm going to forget to say it here. If, because who knows how you're listening to this, mm -hmm. right? Maybe you're driving in your car right now. I just want to say, pull off, please pull off to the side of the road. People say all the time when they are sitting with me, they drop out. What they mean is, and they the language they use is, I go to sleep. <laughs> and what really happens is they go to a very, very deep place, but it can happen very, very quickly. So be safe, pull off to the side of the road. If you're doing anything with heavy equipment, stop. Just give yourself this break. If you're walking, you'd probably be fine, but driving or riding a bike, just pull off to the side and take a little break here. Okay. And if it's comfortable, close your eyes 
Begin breathing in and out through the nostrils, palms to the sky, if, if that's comfortable for you. And then let's just take a deep breath in and hold. And then release this breath. And as you do, let go of everything that has come before in this day all the way out to the count of eight. And another deep breath in. And hold. and release this time letting go of everything that has come before since you were born all the way out to the count of eight somebody once emailed me as i was doing this process and said why am i letting go of all everything i just want to let go of the bad stuff i like who i am and i said because when we let go of everything, we make ourselves a blank slate into which the divine pours and expresses. It's a way of just opening up to experience the mystery anew. Let go of the template, the context that we each bring to the experience. If you like, if you're ready. The deep breath in, hold, and now as you let go of this breath to the count of eight, letting go of everything that has come before since the inception of your soul, all the way out. Just let your breath easily fall into whatever rhythm and depth it will. Become aware of the breath in the space where you are. Maybe it's a room, maybe you're outside in a park. Maybe you're on an airplane or a ship at sea. As you breathe in and out, there's a cue of breath, units of breath right in front of your face. Each time you breathe, another unit of breath joins at the back of the cue. This breath is for you. This cue is just for you. And as you breathe, the breath moves up towards the crown, top of the head, and then down into the lungs. And eventually, as you breathe in, drops further and further into the abdomen and eventually the hips and eventually the totality of your being. At some point when you're breathing, it might even feel like you're breathing through every pore in your skin. Your whole body is breathing. And the cue of breath is drawing its breath from the space around you, but eventually, that breath is coming from the breath of the planet. And if you step back in your mind's eye, you can see or sense, or be aware, ah, the breath of the planet, the atmosphere surrounds the planet. 
And notice the breath of the planet is also serving your neighbors and your neighbor's neighbors and so on and so forth. In fact, the breath of the planet is serving everyone. In this way, each time you breathe, you are connected to every single person on the planet. And sometimes the mind will jump in, but I don't want their stuff. I got my own stuff. It's not about that. It's just the breath. Common reference point. Breath. And notice the breath of the planet actually doesn't differentiate between people and animals and insects and fish and water and earth. You could say with each breath, you are connected to everyone and everything above, upon, and within the planet. In fact, you may even begin feeling that you are breathing by and for and of the planet itself. And notice the breath of the planet becomes the breath of the cosmos for at the very edge of our atmosphere is space and that in turn connects to every other part of space and so we can say with each breath you are connected to everyone and everything throughout all of creation including that energy that light however you perceive it or understand it the divine And perhaps initially, you might perceive that light as originating from the other side of the cosmos. But notice, every time you breathe in, it comes closer and closer. Eventually, it's close enough that you can perceive the twin frequencies that together comprise and express as the divine light. The divine itself and the frequency of perfect health intertwine such that there is no separating one from the other. It's not just perfect health as we understand or conceive of it as human beings, mental, physical, and so on. It's every iteration. Eventually, that light draws close enough that it connects in perhaps at your nostrils initially and then instantaneously throughout every aspect of your being. An invitation extended from the divine to each and every aspect of you, known and unknown. Come return to your natural state of alignment and resonance. And with that, the artifacts of dissonance appear to fall away and gather near the universal drain, part of your energetic field. Don't worry about the details, just be with the experience. For whatever remains in separation, I invite you to remove the universal plug. I'll do the same as we remind ourselves with each breath, you are connected to everyone and everything, the divine, the light, the invitation to each of the smallest aspects of you. The divine is becoming you and you are becoming the divine and the river is flowing. Let's begin. Often the divine light descends 
from the top of the head. And as it does, there can be physical sensation, a physical resonance, a warmth, a buzzing, a tingling. Sometimes there's no sensation. Whatever is unfolding within you is perfect. It descends not only down the core of your being, but through every cell in your body, enlivening. It returns to its natural state as it descends through the totality of the head the neck, and to the top of the torso. It moves at its own pace, like river water that finds its way down a hill. Sometimes it meanders Sometimes there's a waterfall. Sometimes there's a pool. Sometimes the stream is invisible. It drops beneath the surface. As it descends, it enlivens. The divine is becoming you and you are becoming the divine. As it descends, you may feel aspects of your body beginning to resonate. You may have a sense of that presence in ways that are difficult to describe. Don't worry about words. Just be fully in the experience. The river is flowing. All the way down into the hips. is buzzing, there's something coming up for you to give voice to or reflect on here, please add your voice, add your perspective. Think of this as a process of the soul coming home in the body, the divine coming home in your being expression. Sometimes it feels like gravity is being turned up. The body becomes heavy, sometimes very, very heavy. If that's your experience, nothing abnormal. Many, many other people have had the same experience. And sometimes that type of feedback can be interpreted in other aspects of life, like, oh, something's not right here. And in this context, the reason for that heaviness is just a deeper encounter with the divine embodied, a deeper level of embodiment. And initially, for some people, it feels like a heavier body, greater gravity. Eventually, with some integration, the heaviness will shift. Some people might feel it like 
a lightness shows up in lots and lots of different ways. The key is to remember the divine mystery, the unknown. And if something comes up into your awareness that's distracting or disturbing or uncomfortable, especially if your mind is focused on it and you'd like to release it, you can just remind yourself with each breath, you are connected. Everyone, everything, the divine, the light, the twin frequencies connected into each of the smallest aspects, the river is flowing. It will always take care of it. mouth again. Anything coming up for you to give voice to? Truth seeker. another wave of resonance. I feel it in my crown of my head, moving through my hands. How it shows up for you, I don't know. Just let it unfold. Whatever is showing up for you is perfect. It's not about a particular form or expression. It's the divine mystery. It's a deeper encounter with the divine, within you, not according to how I perceive, on your terms, in your being, your context, your understanding, your relationship. of stuff lighting up in the intuitive faculty. If you're not aware of your intuitive awareness, it might be a bit of a surprise. Sometimes there are lights or other things kind of starting to sparkle or light up a little bit. For me, a lot of my intuitive awareness in the first expression shows up viscerally and feelings throughout the body, tingling, buzzing, and so on. Lots and lots of different ways that this can show up. So however it's unfolding for you is perfect. Absolutely perfect.
divine is becoming you and you are becoming the divine. Sometimes thoughts can creep in, but what about this? What about that? If you're open to it, you can meet those thoughts with a simple reminder. With each breath, you are connected. The divine, the light, the invitation, the river is flowing. Beautiful. So beautiful. And really, we can spend so much time here. We can be here. This is, this is my life, to sit with others in this space. And what an honor it is to sit with you and your community in this way. And just by way of honoring the time and the space here, I'll just say this, when you're ready, you can return the universal plug. I'll do the same and I'll bring this transmission to a close. And such profound, deep gratitude the privilege to walk with you, to sit with you, to resonate with you in this way. Hmm. When you're ready, I'm interested. If you have anything to share or reflect on or ask about or give voice to, So funny. Um, it, you know, when I do this and uh, and remove the time constraints, right? That I I know I have something going on. Um, there's because there's a hesitancy to go into the light. You mentioned mm -hmm. the light, and the light um, shows up for me, and I watch it, and then eventually I can enter it, and then when I enter it it's whatever whatever i'm supposed to know you know it happens and it's very intense it's mm -hmm. beautiful um but i saw the light and it was really interesting that uh to me there are flickering colored lights but the main one that shows up for me is green mm -hmm. it's always mm -hmm. green but eventually um it remained green on the outside but the middle of it was filled with purple and i've never mm -hmm. Mm -hmm never seen that and then it started kind of taking up <clears throat> a little bit more of my vision um to the top of my head and it became like almost like bigger plates it's very it, it, but they were reflective in purple i've never experienced that i do know purple is a big deal um but it was, it was very interesting i also feel like the energy like increasing in my body my the um, magnetism and being able to feel my, my resonance that I hold in myself that fluctuates, mm -hmm. if you will, um, mm -hmm. 
getting stronger. I can I do look just hand movements to measure it, and it's actually like just experimenting. Um, so that's really, really good. Like I already know if I was to dive into it, but you have to let go. You have to let go. There can't be any 10 minutes, five minutes for me. Anyway, I have to totally reckless yeah, abandoned you. to the light, you know, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. but just sitting there and saying hello, even on the outskirts for me was, it's, it's still honor. You know what I'm saying? Um, for sure. To be, I can still feel it. <laughs> mm. And knowing that, like, silence in radio is is bad for radio, right? We're just sitting here saying nothing, but it's good for the spirit. Mm-hmm. It's good for the the psyche because everything that we've been talking about is accumulated like in this moment mm. to be planted, to be explored, to be open, to to feel it on another level. And this is a this is, should be a practice that everyone makes a regular practice to to peace be still. The scripture says, and know that I am God. To sit in that moment of just like gratitude, which is simply saying hello. That's it. Mm. times of ex- expectancy i need something i have a family member who needs help i i'm dealing with this a depression you know come with ex- expectancy but but the, even those times where i don't need or want anything just to say hello and those are the times where mm. you'll find what you need next mm-hmm and I feel the tingling too, mostly in my legs, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. I would just encourage any and everyone just to say in your own way, just say, thank you. Mm. Say it from within first for sure. But if you want to vocalize it, just thank you for everything, peace, joy, all the good things, but also the bad too. Just sit in this place of divine gratitude without judgments. They're so, my goodness. Because I tell you, when you say thank you, Spirit God is saying thank you back. Thank you for being a vessel. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for showing up. Thank you. And just continue that dialogue. Whatever spirit has for you, it's different for each and every one of us. And these moments are key, but they're not privy just to this. The most beautiful side of this is that that conversation continues with your eyes open. (laughs) Signs and synchronicities and wonders. And the scripture says, signs and wonders will accompany them that believe. Messages in movies, messages in billboards, 
doors opening up that you've been trying to pry open your whole life that won't open and they just open without any effort now because you're in the flow. I love it. And they just returned to the, the, the offering for that is just simply thank you. Thank you. What else can I give that I haven't already given? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it, I'm telling you, it's the reverberation. It's resonance because what I just said, God's saying right back to you. What can I give you that I haven't already given? What more do you want? It's here. And just the one thing that I ask that it be given unto you that you really understand the implication of healing yourself is healing others and vice versa. Healing others is indeed healing yourself. For we are all of one body one mind and one spirit the implications each one reach one as in our physical bodies 150 trillion cells make up our body such as the body of light such as the kingdom of heaven how much more how much bigger of each one of us 150 trillion my goodness, all different, carrying information with a purpose and a program and a function. That's you, that's me, that's us. Apart from each other, we really can't do too much. But when we come together, with a simple namaste, with a simple I see you, I honor you. Mm. We establish the new beauty, the new glory, the new kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. That holy is thy name. Peace, peace, peace be upon you, around you, and within you. 
And with these things, I say amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If we plug back in, come back to integrate. And to continue to explore as if you have it all figured out. Mm, so good. All I got to say is get ready. Been having a good time so far. Get ready. Because I has not seen nor has ear heard the things that God has in store for those that love him. Who become a vessel and a vehicle, a conduit. A merkaba of love, an instrument of love. My goodness. Hmm. Amen. Ken, thank you for us co creating, say creating, facilitating. Co-creating, co-laborers co together, it says. <laughs> Doing it together. So good. Because especially when those who feel like they've been alone, that they have, they feel like they've been doing it themselves. And then to know that, oh, wow, I was never alone, ever, ever. I've always been co-creating. I just couldn't see you. I didn't know. Now you know. There are more that are for you than those who are against you. What confidence is in that? Oh my goodness. You might not see them. Look a little bit closer. <laughs> or look with the eyes of your spirit. Close your eyes and look. My eyes close. My mind opens. I lose sight, but I gain focus. So, um, you have you have a, a program that's available. You have books, but kind of blew me away. You have a seventeen week program available for free on the website. Yes. Yeah, 
people want to explore this like what's next how do we move further is this the modality and how do i integrate it i know you you have to cover those things because it literally is what's next um what, what are some of the things in the 17 weeks that people can uh look forward to on, on unpacking with you yeah just exploring on an experiential level deeper and deeper along with a a conversation and exploration with words of divine resonance of divine presence from a number of different perspectives you know understanding polarity understanding soul embodiment understanding wholeness understanding healing understanding the illusion of separation not from a super heady perspective it's just a sketch with experience it's all about anchored in experience uh, in support of the integrated and embodied divine the experience of that in every aspect of your being expression every day so it's yeah it's free you can go to my website at kenwstone.com and find it there, or you can just go to exploringdivineresonance.com and it'll just redirect you to the page. And all you have to do is put your name and email address in and go get a login to my online learning platform, which is called the Resonance Institute. And it'll drip you an email and tell you about the next class that's available and you'll find them in the in your library and transmission and there's Q and A's. If you have questions, you can just write them right there on the page and I'll respond to them personally. And there's transcripts of everything. It's all, it's all available there. It's <laughs> totally free. I love so the fact, it out. I love the fact is this part of what a healer does is that you remove the excuses. It's too hard. It's too much. I don't know how to do it. It's just everything's too expensive. It's like, hold on. Like, no, everything's there. Like, there's no excuse. I love it. I love it. Like, cause though it, it separates, it separates people. The ones who, cause once you eliminate an excuse, another excuse pops up. <laughs> hold on. Why are you the king of how many do you got? And then you deal with that one, another one, another one. And then there's those people who that like for everything, there's a reason why. I mean, we've had them, we work through them. Like, are they legit? Are they just this defense mechanism? But for the ones who are like, they just need the, the attaboy, the go ahead, the here it is. And then everyone's different being able to sit with those people, but removing the excuses, there's now no more excuses for you not to, there's no more excuses for you to operate on a lower level of what you thought was your ceiling is now your floor. There's no, I love it. I love it. I know like for Christ, he totally was that. And when you beckon people, you got to come down to people's level in order to bring them up higher. And you can only, you can only share <laughs> what, what you've embodied in encountered and experienced yourself and then once you do now you have the authority so yeah find a coach find somebody who's been through it why so that you can save yourself time save yourself money years my goodness there's no it is biblical it's scriptural finding someone that's going to help propel you to the next level, to go out, prepare you, equip you, train you to do great things. And if a healer is not doing that, I'm, I don't know if they're a healer. What avenue they use, music, poetry, finance, I don't care. Like it is to, to impart something beautiful in you to see you soar. Ken enjoyed this, whatever you want to call it. We kind of, we just journey. I think a journey is a great word. Mm -hmm. uh, journey through conversation, journey through spirit, journey through transmission. Thank you for, for showing up and uh, I, I honor you. And we got to do it again because I already know mm. you got responses to everything I just said. And we could just keep going. And that's what, that's what spirit is. It's, 
kindred spirits, even that word kindred spirits, you said familiar spirit, right? Kindred is another word. And it's right. There's, there's resonance. Hold on. We know each other from somewhere. No, we never met. No, no, no. From somewhere. Kindred spirits. Mm, we just get to articulate it. So good. With each other. But then the audience. Because I, 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 when I get chills, listen, it's God moves things and does stuff in me in the conversation. But I already know it's we're conduits we we amplify we're an amplifier for a radio receiver to send it out so that other people can feel and experience what you've experienced when you heard the call and then in the midst of a conversation mm -hmm. or in a meditation they're hearing the call same thing mm. amen <laughs> love you brother thank you so much for sharing this space with love me we'll too. have to do it again thank you look forward to it it's an honor right, brother many blessings shalom and to you peace That does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.